G'day guys, Shane here. Let's talk about the top 10 photography apps for phone photography for 2023. Let's get into it. Now, some of these apps will be for iOS only. Some of them will be for iOS and Android. First off the bat is an editing app, although you can take photos with it. That is Adobe Lightroom Mobile. Now I get it, it's a paid app and it's not exactly cheap, but it's the only app that I know of that you can do masking the way it does with the sky masking which is awesome for astrophotography it does subject masking which again is awesome for astrophotography because if we've got a, a track or a tractor or something like that sitting in the foreground of an astro shot you can edit it very easily separately from the rest of the image and the last thing that i really like about this is the presets and the presets has helped so many people, my presets over there on shanemosson.com, they're five bucks a set, cheap as chips, five bucks Australian, so probably 30 cents or something US, but they are a ripper start to editing an Astro shot. You can throw the preset in and adjust things very simply from there. It's a really good head start. Number one, Adobe Lightroom mode. Number two is a planning app and that is PhotoPills. If you've watched anything that I've done before with planning my Astro shots, working out where the galactic core is, working out where the moon's going to be, where the sun's going to set or rise, you know that I use PhotoPills. It has been my go-to app for at least 10 years for any sort of landscape, nightscape sort of photography. You can use that augmented reality that it has using the camera, using the galactic core or the sun or the moon or whatever you're shooting to work out where it's going to sit in your subject. And you can go fast forwarding to a time in the future to see where that sun or where the galactic core will be and you throw it in your diary and say go back there and shoot that subject then because the composition will be so much better photo pills fantastic app it's about 15 bucks or so on ios and android Number three is my favorite long exposure app that is even longer it's available only on ios this is kind of picked out the other long exposure apps for a few reasons one is the awesome way it does star trails. It gives such good color in the star trails, better than any other app that I've ever seen. But the best thing about star trails with even longer, it automatically reduces most, not all, but most of the things that move through the sky that aren't in the same arc as the star trails. Things like shooting stars, things like aeroplanes, satellites, all those things at nighttime can ruin star trail photos. But even longer takes them out automatically that's bloody good the second thing about even longer that i absolutely love is the intervalometer to set up a night mode shot on even longer say a 30 second photo all the stars in the sky and say i want to shoot 500 of those photos it will do it for you all night long it's fantastic 500 photos of the night sky as the stars move through the sky throw them into another app you've got some good astro lapses good movies it's just it's sensational even longer it's not cheap but it's worth every freaking penny you pay for that sucker it's the best app for long exposure number Great. four for me is also a long exposure app but i don't actually use it for a long exposure app that is reflex the reflex camera app for almost every photo that i take my first go-to place is the native camera app on the iphone when i can't get it to do something that i wanted to do or if I'm using external lenses on the phone at nighttime, especially because of that LiDAR sensor that's on the iPhone, uh, the, the lenses don't work too well, especially at nighttime. So I have to go to a manual camera app and that is Reflex. Reflex is just sensational. The dials, the interface, everything is very intuitive. You can adjust everything just like you can on a DSLR or mirrorless camera. Sensational, absolutely love it. And you can do long exposure with it, but it's only going to give it to you in JPEGs, whereas even longer, we'll give it to you in a raw format. Next is a photography app. Well, sort of. Next is the Hover X1 app. This is the app that controls that little drone, that little robotic drone that I've got that will follow me around the place and do basically what a camera crew will do for you. Sensational bit of kit, very, very clever bit of kit. And the app that's there, you use that to download use it to interface with the robot to work out what you want it to do when you push that single button on the machine. Hover X1, it's not a photography app as such, but I use it to get video and get well, photos from that drone. Number six is an app that I have found fairly recently and it's been a bit of a game changer for astrophotography 
for anybody with an iPhone, and that is Astro Shader. If you've got an older iPhone, that is anything before the iPhone 11, you don't have night mode. What Astro Shader will do will let you take long exposure photos of the stars, up to 30 seconds, but it will let you take up to 500 of these photos, and it will automatically lay them up and align them and stack them on top of each other and give you a TIFF image or a JPEG image, and it's incredibly good. I've been shooting the Orion Nebula just by using this app. Sensational app, and it's free. Number seven is an app, again, that I've used for quite some time. And I use this, not for photography for this channel as such, but if you've got a business and you've got some branding around that business, like what we do with Buck and Beard, all the beard products that we make, I use r &I Films to edit all of those photos to give them the exact same look. And what I mean is there is basically, a, you can do it all the editing that you want. My workflow is generally get that photo, put it into Lightroom, make all the base adjustments that I want, export that, put it into r &I Films and give it the look that I want. That look could be a vintage look, it could be a Polaroid look, it could be anything really, whatever suits you. But to do one photo, bring the next photo in, apply the same what you did just before, apply the same what you just did before, apply the same what you did before, you can bash this stuff up pretty quickly and uniformly. It's very good, r and Film. At number eight, we've got another app that I've used for, well, quite some time, that is Lens Distortions. I used this app well before I even started a YouTube channel, this is an app that's going to let you bring environmental elements into your photo. You can add fog, rain, sun flares, light flares, lens flares, all that sort of stuff. Pretty damn good app. There are some paid elements to it and there's some free elements to it. You can go there, put your toe in the water, see what it's like. You'll be impressed. I'm sure you will be. And before you know it, you'll be using lens distortions on plenty of your landscape photography. Well, even portrait photography, to be honest. Any sort of photography. At number nine, it's kind of a double up app. Well, there's two apps, really. And that's the DJI Suite. And I use this for some editing, mainly for controlling cameras and stuff. That's the DJI Fly and the DJI uh, Mima. So I use the Fly for the drone to, to interface with the drone to bring in, uh, video down and stuff from the drone or photos down from the drone if I don't want to use the uh, SD card into the computer. And the Mimo app is for the Osmo action that I use, action cameras that I use, the gimbals that I use, and things like this camera right here, the Pocket 3, I use it to interface with it as well. Very, very well designed apps, and they just, they just work. And that's what I really like about utility apps is when they work, they work, and I'm a happy man. The last one is an app that I've probably done a video on it before. I've got a feeling I have. That is the Night Sky app on iOS. It has been, it's been just bloody awesome for me to work out that really bright star there. What is that? I'll use this app. Go, oh, that's Venus. Idiot. You should know that. It shows you all the constellations. It shows you where satellites are tracking. If you want to go hunting the ISS in the night sky, this is the perfect app for that. You can even set alerts to let you know that the ISS is about to pass through your sky where you can see within about 30, 40 seconds of right now. Fantastic app, fantastic app. Can't recommend it enough. I do pay for it, but it's worth every penny. So that's it. That's my top 10 apps that I'm using right now in 2023. What have I missed? What should I be reviewing on this channel for you guys? Let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel because very shortly I'm going to show you all the accessories that I think are the top accessories that you should be using for phone photography right now. All right, guys. Catch you later.